tell me how a swordsman can beat a dinosaur! Welcome back, nerds. Fino here with a guide for the sexiest dinosaur since... You know what? I'm not gonna finish that sentence. It's Kijo Koyo. She's a four-star berserker coming with the imminent Fate Requiem crossover event. Koyo is a defensive, self-buffing, pseudo-supportive attacker? She wants to be a lot of things, so let's try and unpack this. First up, we've got Morph, Dinosaur. Multi-turn 30% defense buff, respectable. I prefer hard mitigation on my berserkers, but it's okay. Kinda like what Ibaraki has, except while Ibaraki also comes with a supplementary single turn defense buff, Koyo has star absorption. Here you're faced with your first big decision point. With a 3 turn duration and 5 turn cooldown, you can keep the defense effect going for more turns than not. However, the absorption buff is only for a single turn, meaning you also have an incentive to hold it for burst turns. If you're running a Merlin comp, I'll recommend the latter because you'll have access to both stars and consistent healing to compensate. Next up is Thread of Life. It's a 2k party heal, single debuff cleanse, and it also drops 3 turns of insta-kill immunity. That last part is extremely situational and the heal is neither large nor frequent enough to play around. So in typical play, I'd just hold it until you need the cleanse or Koyo is in immediate danger of dying. More than normal for a berserker, I mean. Lastly is Nine-Headed Dragon's Lightning. Or Fire. I've seen both. Multi-turn Quick Buster Hybrid buff with a targeted overcharge component. On one hand, you can combo this with Koyo's Noble Phantasm, Momiji Gari. It's a single target buster attack with a preemptive instant kill. Ah, just kidding. It's an attack buff. Multi-turn, so if you somehow get this off multiple times in that three-turn window, you could hypothetically stack it. Mind you, it's a buster NP and Koyo has a 3B deck and no abusable battery, so that's a long shot. Realistically, you just write off it for face guard damage on follow-up turns. It does burn Koyo, but the magnitude is small enough that you won't need to worry about it unless you've gotten nailed with a burn amplifier. It's not worth playing around. But if you're keen on making Koyo your account's flagship unit, there are a number of cleansing command codes you can put under arts or quick guard. But going back to that attack buff, it's tied to overcharge, meaning Koyo herself is a valid target for 9-headed dragon's lightning. However, the effect only goes up by 5% per level. So instead of Koyo, you can target someone like Merlin for increased star income. Or here's a spicy meme, Chen Gong. If you run him as an attacker, Chen Gong has one of the nastiest overcharge effects in the game. If you have at least 200% and his NP doesn't immediately kill an enemy, it hits them again for additional damage. Arash works in a similar way if you want to go with that route, but the Gong Man actually pairs nicely with Koyo on account of his party defense buff and massive Berserker's steroid. Of course, his NP kills an ally and he provides very little charge on his own, so you need to play around those. Maybe Gong the Dinosaur once she's blown her load, or someone like Anderson after you get his buffs. In the future, Koyo should work well with Tamamo Vich. She's not compatible with Vich's most famous trick of enabling three consecutive buster NPs, but with the Atlas Mystic Code, Koyo can still double up on her most relevant buffs. Not to mention Vich can furnish both stars and star absorption, meaning Koyo can spam her defense buff with impunity. On top of all this, you can extend Koyo's reach with crit command codes and offensive CEs. Maybe Golden Sumo to have an attack buff independent of her Noble Phantasm, or Aerial Drive for its mixed buffs. Failing that, just go with some kind of generic Buster Craft Essence. On paper, Kijo Koyo looks pretty decent. She's got some of her power tied up in kind of gimmicky effects, but a card type buff with an absorption effect and a triple buster deck is still a pretty strong core. Not to mention she's got synergy with a lot of major supports, both high-end and budget. But there's something I haven't mentioned yet. A foundation of wet sand. This is Koyo's attack stat. And this is Jerker's attack stat. Attack-wise, Koyo is on the low end of four-star berserkers and it hurts real bad. Not her attacks, I mean, the situation. She kind of reminds me of a single-target Kiyohime, but not that single-target Kiyohime. Kiyohime is an AoE Zerk with a bunch of buffs, debuffs, and defensive utility, but she hits like a potato. Darius, on the other hand, is a hodgepodge of weird utility shit, but 1,000 more attack. And they hit for comparable amounts of damage. Actually, I think Darius gets a relevant buff this year, but that's beside the point. The point is that your servant's base attack stat counts for a lot. And Koyo's is low. On a collision course with Cha-Cha low. For a gotcha servant, that's a problem, because if you were playing the game last year and got Jerker, you get her at NP5 just for playing her event. You'd have to pull five copies of Kijo Koyo just to compete. If you go through with it, she's plenty playable, but it's a hard sell to make to someone who isn't already going balls deep for Dino DNA or Voyager. So with that said, I can't recommend going out of your way to get her. Thanks for watching. Stick around for more Fate Requiem coverage and stop by my Twitch channel where I'll be rolling for a number of servants, including Kijo Koyo. Twitch.tv slash I stream Friday through Sunday at 3 p.m. Pacific. See you there.